The topic I'm going to take up today is for the students of class 12 from the geography book, India, People and Economy. And the name of the chapter is Human Settlements. Now, what do we mean by the human settlements? It means the cluster of dwellings of any size or type. Mind children, I said, the size may also vary and the type may also vary. Where the humans live is known as a settlement. Settlements vary from hamlet to metropolitan city. So that means it's the number of people living in any of the settlements. Now we'll be taking up few terms which are used as per the census of India. Number one, city. Cities are the urban centers with the population more than one lakh. So that area is known as a city. We take up the term town. Towns are the urban centers with less than one lakh of the population. Metropolitan city. Cities having the population between one to five million are metropolitan cities. And as per 2001 census, there were 35 such cities where the population ranged between 1 to 5 million. Mega city, an urban center with more than 5 million population is called mega city. We also take up the term urban agglomeration. It's a town with its adjoining urban outgrowth. So that means an urban area where the population expands. We have certain examples for the urban agglomerations. For example, Delhi, Mumbai, they are the best example of this. Human population lives in the settlement of different shapes and sizes, including the villages and towns. The basic unit of residence is a house, which may be a small hut or a big bungalow. Small and sparsely spaced settlements are called villages, where the people are mainly engaged in agricultural and other primary activity. And when we talk about the large settlements, so that means they are generally the urban settlements, where the people are engaged in non-agricultural activities. So when I say non-agricultural activities, so dear children, it can be the secondary or the tertiary activities. Now we'll be taking up few features of the rural settlements. Number one, when the people of these areas, they are mainly engaged in agricultural and other primary activity. Number two, rural settlements supply food and other raw materials to the people of urban settlements because they have enough space to grow all these items or the raw material. Rural settlements depend upon the land to carry out their primary economic activity. And in the villages, we have plenty of land for the production of all these products. Further, the rural people are less mobile because they don't believe in mobility like the people of the urban areas. And their social relations are intimate, unlike the urban settlement people. Their pace of life is very slow, but still they enjoy their life. Now, in contrast to the features of the rural settlements, we take up the features of the urban settlements. For the rural settlements, as I said, that the people are basically engaged in the primary activities, but here, in the urban centers, people are engaged in secondary and tertiary activities, of which industry, trade, transportation, and services are very important. Services can be the tertiary, they can be the quaternary services, or further, they can be queenary services also. Cities provide the goods and services, not only for themselves, but also to the people of rural areas. In return to food and raw material, 
what they get from the rural parts. Urban settlements are much larger in size. They present a compact look with closely spaced houses, unlike we discussed for the rural settlements. Life of the urban people is very complex and fast. Their social relations are very formal. As we discussed for the rural settlements, that the relations in the rural areas, they are very intimate, unlike the urban settlements. Types of the rural settlements are determined by the built up area and number two, the distance between the houses. For example, in the northern plains, we have clustered settlements. So children, clustered means grouped together in one particular part. Whereas the dispersed settlements, dispersed means when they are scattered apart. They are found in the jungles, on the hill slopes or in the pasture land. There are three groups of the factors which affect the types of the settlements. Settlements means here we are talking about the rural settlements. Number one, the physical factors. Number two, ethnic and cultural factors. And number three, very important factor for the rural settlements is the security factors for the people living in those areas. Now first we take up the physical factors. Under physical factors, relief, altitude, climate, drainage, and the type of soil. These are very important features which play an important role in determining the type and spacing of the settlements. Water is the most important single factor in the dry areas. In such areas, the houses are clustered around the source of water. For example, in Rajasthan, the compactness of the settlements is determined by the source of water because in that state of India, there is scarcity of water. Even in the rural parts, children, you must have noticed that mostly the settlements, they are around the source of water in the village. That may be a well, that may be a pond or any other source which supplies the water to the people in the rural areas. Now we take up the second type of the factors that is the ethnic and cultural factors. These factors are very important for the rural areas in determining the layout of the rural settlement. The main land owning caste occupies the central point. I said, the person who belongs to the high caste, the person who is a land owner in the rural area, he is the most important personality of that particular part. So his settlement will be having the central position and will form the nucleus of the village. It attracts the other caste groups who provide the services to the village community. Harijan dwellings are generally situated on the periphery away from the main settlement because these are the people of the low caste who provide the services to the upper class people of the rural areas. So that means it shows the social segregation. It also leads to fragmentation of a compact settlement into several units because when we talk about the fragmentation, so that means on the basis of the social segregation, the compact settlement gets dispersed into the different dwellings. Now the third important factor is the security factors. These factors play an important role in determining again the types and the distribution of the rural settlements. Defense against theft and robberies is the main consideration. So people prefer to live in compact settlements to defend themselves against the attacks by the wild animals as well. Because generally there are certain examples where the wild animals, they enter into the village and harm the village folk. 
So they want to have the security for themselves. And in such areas, the village folk try to live in the compact settlements. Now, the another phase of the chapter which we are going to take up is, that is the types of the rural settlements. So we'll be talking about the four types of the rural settlements. Number one, clustered, agglomerated, or nucleated. Number two, semi-clustered or fragmented. Number three, hamleted settlements. And number four, dispersed. Now, these types we'll be discussing one by one. Number one, clustered or agglomerated, or we also call them the nucleated. So the first feature of these types of settlements is, they are generally characterized by the compact and closely built block of houses. Number two, in such settlements, the general living area is very distinct and separated from the surrounding forms. The narrow streets, they separate the two rows of the houses. These settlements present a definite layout plan, which means the rural settlements can be of linear shape, rectangular shape, L-shaped, or sometimes they are shapeless also. Compact settlements are normally found in the fertile plains or the river valleys. And sometimes the people live in the compact villages for the security and defense reasons, as we have already discussed. Number two types of the settlements is semi-clustered or fragmented, just opposite to the compact types. The features for these settlements are, number one, such settlements may result from segregation or fragmentation of the large compact village. In such cases, a section of a village society chooses or is forced to live little away from the main cluster. So this already we have discussed under the social segregation. In these villages, the landowning and the dominant community lives in the central place. And the other people who belong to the lower caste, they live in the peripheral areas. And such examples are very common in the plains of Gujarat. Now the third type is the hamleted settlements. A compact settlement often gets fragmented because of the most important reason is a social segregation. And this is imposed by the caste system. Secondary settlements units are often known as Panna, Para, Palli, Nagla, or Dhani. Children, these are the terms which are locally used in certain areas. And Para is made up of many, of one less than one caste. Now the last type is dispersed or isolated settlements. These settlements are known as scattered or sprinkled settlements because they are dispersed. Hamlets are scattered over the large areas. There is no specific plan and the settlement unit is a single hamlet. Because it's a single hamlet, so there's hardly found any plan as we have discussed the linear shape, rectangular shape, star shape. So these shapes, they are not found in the dispersed settlements. And lastly, the settlements are found in the form of isolated huts. So dear children, till now in this chapter, we have discussed about the factors affecting the settlements, the types of the settlements, especially in the areas of the rural parts. Now, in the another part, we'll be talking about the urban settlements. Thank you.